What's up everyone? This is Erica with Hooking You Up and today we're going to do a super fun project. This will be for the members only. Um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. I did want to use a lot of leftover be I have this whole pencil box filled with like buttons and beads and all kinds of random stuff. So anyways, this is a busy blanket. I was inspired to do this because I am a CNA and I work in memory care and a few of my residents have these blankets. These are perfect for anyone, not just memory care residents, but um, kids, busy toddlers, and people on the autism spectrum. So what you're going to need is four kinds of thick and wool, super chunky, six weight yarn. I'm using these four colors. You can use all the same color if you want. Um, I'll show you how you're going to do that in a minute because I'm doing four different colors. And this is the very first one that I made, so it's not perfect, but the second one is going to be perfect. So make sure it's all the same weight so that it stays even. You're going to need three different buttons. If you only have one size, that's fine. Any buttons will work, but for this exact project, I'm going to be um, showing you with these size buttons. A scrunchie and then four beads and some uh, fleece super soft yarn okay so I'm going to be using a size 6.5 millimeter hook and I highly suggest using a tapestry needle or having one on hand um, for any projects you use it just makes everything go faster I have my beads and buttons over here. I'll grab my scrunchie. Now let's get started. So the easiest part is just doing the base, the four squares first. Now I was going to show you guys how to do one full piece if you just want to use one color, um, but that's just going to take up more time in this video. So um, however many you change, just double it lengthwise and then just work uh you know side to side flipping your work until you reach the number of um rows that you need i'm going to start by making a slip knot i'm going to make a chain of 18. Now that we have a chain of 18, we're going to yarn over and double crochet in that second chain from the hook. So skipping this one, the second one. I guess that would be third. One, we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Two, and we're going to continue until we reach the end. That's in the next 15 stitches. So it should look like this. Now we're going to chain one, and you're going to chain one at the end of each row, okay? After your last double crochet. We're going to flip our work, and we're going to continue skipping that first stitch always, double crocheting in the second stitch. It'll keep it nice and straight and even and then we'll double crochet all the way down to the end. Again, we chain one, flip our work. Now we have two rows of double crochet, including the foundation chain. We have three, but we're not gonna count the foundation chain, okay? So we're, this is row one, row two, and now we're going to continue for a total of eight more rows for a total of 10. Okay, so we're working our third. So we're gonna do seven more rows after this, okay? I'm 
Okay, I just want to show you guys. So we're at the end of row three. Okay. And I don't want you to forget this very last stitch. It can look like nothing at the very end. But if we miss that stitch, we're going to be short and it's not going to be even on the sides. Okay. So you're going to double crochet nice and straight chain one and turn and you're going to make sure you don't miss that very last stitch at the end of every row so once we end down here it's going to be the same same thing in this space okay that'll keep your your project nice and straight so we just finished row three we're going to do a total of eight rows okay so five more rows and make sure that you have four strips, okay? One, two, three, four. Four squares. Once you have four squares, you can move on to weaving them in. So place your squares however you'd like. I'm going to place mine like this. And using a stitch marker, I'm going to weave in all the sides with my loose ends my loose tails okay so once you connect all the pieces together we'll start doing the fun part and because weaving in the sides are typically easy I don't usually go through or teach you guys how to do it but you're just going to I don't know if you can see that let me see You're just going to keep the sides as even as possible. Use stitch mar markers if you need to. And that's how I'm going to do all the sides, okay? All right, I have all the sides together. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, so now I'm going to do this square first. So I'm going to use some regular four weight. Uh, I'm not sure if the weight's right. I'll put the correct weight on the screen, but I'm using some Craftsmart regular yarn. And I have four beads. And I got all my supplies, my beads, my buttons, yarn, everything at Michael's. Okay. Yeah. You want to make sure you have a tapestry needle so what I like to do first you can figure out which one you want to do and I just start from a corner far corner I'm going to let me bring this closer I'm going to stick my hook anywhere in the corner area and I'm going to bring my yarn through. Let's make that a little longer. Okay. And you can clip off a long tail, bring that through. And I like to just double knot it to keep it nice and sturdy. You can weave in this end. You can bring it to the back and weave it in later. So I'm going to insert my tapestry needle or my yarn through my tapestry needle. And I'm going to bring all four beads through. Okay, bring it all the way through. Okay. Now, I'm going to kind of, you don't want to pull it too tight or this end will come up, but you want to hold this down and pull it tight. Find the space on this corner. Do it right here. Same thing.
Double knot it. There you go. And now I'm going to bring the tail in the back and I like to weave everything in the back, okay? So now we have our first one. It's really that simple. I got these super cute silky scrunchies from the dollar store. It was a three pack, three for a dollar. So check your supplies there. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find a space in the second row. I'll do a little further out. And I'm using thick yarn, super bulky yarn, weight six, to sew this one together. Jeez, I didn't realize it was that long. Just make sure you cut off a long tail. Okay. You can tie it and weave in the back whenever. Insert your tapestry needle. See why I said using a tapestry needle would be beneficial? Trust me. Makes everything go by faster. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is put it through the loop and then through, see, we're going to do it again through the loop, through the next double crochet. again and I did it four times doesn't matter how many times you want to do it as long as you just do one side I'll probably do five times one hurt okay so it should look like that now it's attached And then you can just weave, tie the back super tight, and weave in the ends. It's really that simple. Okay, the next one we're going to be using this fleece super soft yarn this is great for sensory which is why I use this specific yarn and I'm going to put it in this spot so you got to be careful because this yarn does fall apart easily but what I did is find the corner spot bring the working Leave a good tail on this side, but bring it through, wait, this way, just like this. Bring it through, okay, you're going to cut off a good size tail, make it long, okay, you're going to bring it all the way through. See, it's already falling apart, so be careful. Okay. And again, as soon as you cut it, it's going to fall apart, so just be super careful. Okay, we're going to insert our tapestry needle. And then you can put it however you want. I just kind of make it, made it look zigzag just so when you go like this. You know, you can do it any way you want. Let's do it a little different. So I'm going to put it through the front, front to back, pull it all the way through. You don't want to make it super tight or this bottom will roll up. Okay. 
through the back. Front to back. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Now I'm just going to do diagonal, kind of like tic-tac-toe. Okay. Then you can weave in the back. Nice. Okay, in the last square, we're doing the buttons. So again, I'm bringing out my regular weight yarn, Craft Smart, and you just place the buttons where you want them. Okay, and yeah, I'm gonna need to get my metal tapestry needle because that one's not gonna go through. So I'm going to insert it. It might be doable if you don't have a tapestry needle to go through the holes, but I just, it's gonna be much harder. So try to find a tapestry needle. Okay, so I'm going to bring it through the top. You know what? Okay, so you're going to bring it through the back, through one side of the hole, and then to the other hole. Okay, you don't need a super long tail. We just need enough so we can tie the back. Okay, now it's on there, nice. And repeat that for these two buttons. Okay, now that we have all our buttons, we're going to do We're going to do this part. So what we're going to do is make a slip knot. And you're just going to try to keep it straight. Bring the slip knot through. Chain one. And tie this working yarn with the tail. You can bring this tail back because we'll weave it in later. Bring it to the back. Okay, and then there's no amount, correct amount of chain. You're just going to chain until you're slightly past the button, wherever your button is placed. And you can adjust as you need, but hold this. You don't want it the side rolling up. I already kind of did it here. So keep it nice and straight. And the way to determine if your chain is long enough 
you're going to wrap it around the button like this and this part where you left off should be right in this area so it snugs tightly around the button so I can there we go okay flip your work trust me it's easier but you're going to slip stitch to the other side and then you're going to slip stitch in each chain all the way back down You're going to repeat this for all th three buttons. Okay. Clip a good tail. Pull it through. And you can weave in the back when you're done. Just tie it up real nice and tight, double knot it. There you go. And there we go. So when you un when you unclasp it from the button, you see this little hole. It's really that easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and then I'll meet you guys at the end. And if you made it this far, congratulations. So this last part is optional, but I'm just going to seal the side with doing single crochet in the round. Chain one. I just made a slip knot and attached it to the corner. I chain one, chain one again. And then I'm just going to single crochet in every chain in the round all the way around until I start, until I finish where I started. Okay. And here we go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was easy for you. By easy, I just mean fun and easy to understand. And I thank you guys so much for tuning in. This fits perfectly on your lap. And it's perfect just to give the kids, residents, anyone who will be using this, just something to do. This is great if you have anxiety. You can just fold it up, put it in your bag or your purse, and unfold it. If you're waiting in the DMV, you just need to fidget something. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.